Welcome to this OCR Cambridge Technicals Level 3 Information Technology video where we'll be looking through Unit 8 Project Management and we're looking at Criteria P4, Pass 4. Pass 4 says develop a project plan for the identified project. Now before we have a look at this, basically in P3, the previous video, you produce the documentation for completing a project. P4 kind of builds on top of this and you are required to create a plan for how you would create and finish and follow this project. The project that I was talking about in the previous video was a website. So you may hear me talking about the project plan for a website or developing a website. It's linked to the same, um, the same thing. So you have to produce a plan which shows you the different um, stages and um, activities or tasks that you have to complete in order to convert this website. You don't have to do a website. Um, this is just the example I'm, I'm using as it's the um, combination I've used when I've taught this project before. So in order to uh, provide your evidence for P4, you're going to need to produce this project plan. And in this example, we're going to use something called a Gantt chart. The Gantt chart sets out all the tasks and then it sets out a plan for how you're going to go about tackling them, completing them, and also how many days you're going to assign to do them. So the example one on the board uh, is very basic, or just wanted to say the example in this video is very basic. You have um, down the left hand side, first of all, each of the tasks numbered. You then have the actual task, the time to complete it, and the dependency. And we'll look at this in a bit more detail in a minute. So what happens is you first of all list all of the tasks that you need to complete in order to finish this project. You're probably looking somewhere between maybe 60, 80 or 100 tasks depending on what you are creating. Try and break the projects, uh, sorry, try and break the task into smaller and smaller, smaller tasks and this will allow you to create a long list of tasks. So the first thing I do is I decide how long roughly I'm going to need to complete the task. So I'm going to give the client two days to meet. I'm going to show them designs, which will probably take a day. Um, I'm going to give them three days to confirm the layout of the task, uh, sorry, of the of the project. I'm then going to design the home page, which is going to take me two days. I'm going to add the text, which is going to take me another day, and I'm going to edit the photos and images to go on the uh, home page. This will take me another two days. So far, so good. The next section is to look at the dependencies. The dependencies is what task is dependent on the previous task. In other words, the question you are asking is, what do I have to complete before I can complete the next section? So for example, if I want to meet the client, is there anything that I have to do before? Well, there's, there could be, I could phone them, etc. but I should really have added that to my list of tasks. So actually, for this example, there is no tasks that I need to complete before, so there's no dependency zero. I need to show the designs of my website but I can't show the designs until I meet the client. Meeting the client is task one therefore that is dependent on me meeting the client. Confirming the layout. I can't confirm the layout until I've met the client so that's also dependent on task number one. Uh, I missed out the three there. So design the home page. When can I design the home page? Well, I can't design the home page until I've confirmed the layout. Otherwise, I will be designing it without any idea of what it's supposed to look like. I can add the text once I've designed it. So that's four. I can also add the pictures, edit them once I've designed the home page, four. And there we have the dependencies for these tasks. Basically, which task do I have to complete before I can move on to the next one? So I cannot design the home page until I've confirmed the layout, which makes sense. You won't want to make a home page without knowing whether or not the um, client wants that particular home page. Next up is we begin to add in the um, kind of visualization, build up the Gantt chart. So I'm going to use blue for this. I'm interested in the days. So we're going to start on the 1st of January. Obviously your days may be different. Um, please, or dates might be different, so please check them. It's going to take me two days to do that task. Then I'm going to show the designs, but this is going to take one day, but I can't do it until I've finished task one, 
task one ends there. So therefore, this is the next task. I can confirm the layout after I've shown the design. So that could happen at the same time, but that takes three days. So there's the three, color it in. Next up, we have designing the home page. I cannot design the home page until I've confirmed the layout. So I have to do the task here and uh, it's two days. So I'm going to color that in. That was task four. You can see that I can add the images and that's a one day task and I can add, edit the images at the same time. That's a three day task. So I'm starting to build up the Gantt chart uh, as a visual kind of overview of what needs to be done when. Now these times are not um, exact. It's not a science. You're saying to yourself, how many days do I need to meet the client? How many days am I going to give myself to create this website or this page or this text? Um, and this is one of the downfalls of the Gantt chart is it's only um, indicative. It's not an exact science. Um, you're kind of saying, right, three days to do this task. I need to make sure that I'm working on those before I move on to the next one. You might also want to add in lead and lag time. So lead time is where you can convert the um, where you can complete the work earlier. So I might meet the client a day earlier, in which case I can start this a day earlier and I can start this. Uh, if that one begins there, I could also start this one a day earlier, which means that this can start a day earlier and so on. And then lag time is where you might go over. So I'm going to give my client actually three days to meet. But then obviously this pushes on the next task. Some of them you have to complete within that time. So for example, again, if this keeps dragging on, keeps lagging, it's going to end up with you missing a deadline. Clients are going to be unhappy, stakeholders, customers, etc. So the lag time is basically what's the, the, the latest I could complete this task and still be able to continue with the work. So here we're obviously giving three days to do this. So actually if I'm over there by another day, I've still got these two days to finish, finish the work if I need to. Let's have a look at a proper uh, one, a Gantt chart that was awarded a pass. So here we go. I'll zoom out a bit so you can see it. Across the top, we've got the um, dates. Then we've got this lovely visualization of the tasks and how long they're going to take, lead and lag times. And then we've got on the left hand side a breakdown of all the tasks. Um, you can see there's, I think there's about 70 or 80 of them all going down. Uh, as we get towards the end of the task, end of the project, we've got more tasks that are dependent on others and so on. So this is P4, produce a project plan. And remember, this is a Gantt chart and you don't have to create a Gantt chart. You can use other methods um, that are in the syllabus. Um, this is just one example, one way that you can provide the evidence. Thanks very much for your time. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave any questions or comments in the um, comments box. And I can always get back to you with any answers to any questions or queries that you have. Thanks for your time today.